this video, I'm going to show you how I created this responsive navigation bar with Flexbox. I'll go over the entire HTML structure and how I applied all the styling with CSS. Let's get started. So if you're new to my channel, I make videos on UX, UI design, and front-end coding. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a comment down below so I know what kind of tutorial you would like to see next. So jumping right into it, I'm opening up a CodePen project. At the top of the HTML, I already have a head tag with a link to the font family that I'm going to use for this project. And beneath that, I have the body tags. And within the body tags, I have the five icons that I'm going to use throughout this project. In the CSS, I added a preprocessor of SCSS, and then I declared some variables in the root. And then I added some basic styling, like setting the box sizing to border box and a margin and padding to zero. I also added the font family to the body, as well as a background color. In this video, I'm going to show you the full tutorial from beginning to end. So first, I'm going to start with the desktop layout, and then I'm going to make it responsive for mobile. So to get started, first in the body tag, I'm going to declare a nav bar, and I'm going to add the class of nav. Within that nav bar, I'm going to place all the elements for this navigation bar. So first I'm going to create an unordered list with the class of nav list. And within that unordered list, there's going to be several list items. So each list item will include a link to the page that it will bring the user to, it will include an SVG, and it will include a label for the SVG. So in here, I'm going to create a list item with a class of nav item. And within that nav item, I'm going to include a link. And because I didn't create that page yet, for right now, I'll just leave it as a hashtag. And the first thing I'm going to include here is the SVG. And the second thing I'm going to include is the label for the SVG. So here I'm going to create a paragraph tag with a class of nav item label. So this is the basic structure for all the list items. So now I'm going to duplicate it several times and add the SVGs in their correct place. And now for each label, I'm just going to include a description for the icon. So this will be home and so on. So this is all the HTML that we actually need for the project and everything else will be completed within the CSS. So jumping into the CSS, again, I use SCSS as a preprocessor, so that way I can be really organized. So first I'm going to reference that class of nav. And within that nav class, first I'm going to reference the nav list and apply all the styling for that. And then I will apply styling for the nav item. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to write and and then list. So this is essentially referencing the unordered list class. So here I'm going to apply specific styling. So I'm going to set the background color to white. I'm going to add a box shadow. I'm going to set the padding of the top and bottom to one REM and left and right to zero. I'm going to set the width to a specific value and the height to 100% of the viewport height. I'm also going to set the position to fixed. Now, in order to align the elements of the navigation bar and have it behave one way in desktop and one way in mobile, there are multiple ways to do this, but the way that I'm going to use it is by using Flexbox. So initially, I'm going to set the display to flex, and then I'm going to set the flex direction to column, and I'm going to align the items in the center. The items are also very close to one another, so I'm going to include a bit of a gap of 2 REM. So now there is a bit of breathing room between the icons. We still have to do a lot of the treatments for the actual SVGs and the labels, but it's definitely starting to come together. Beneath this, but still in that nav class, I'm going to reference the nav items. So I'm going to write and item. 
And for these nav items, first I'm going to set the list style to none, and I'm going to set the font size to 0.7 REM. I also want to set this font to a particular color, so I'm going to set it to a variable that I already declared. I'm also going to set the text align to center, and I know I'm going to add a hover effect, so I'm going to set the transition to 200 milliseconds ease in. I just realized this color didn't change because it's under the link tag, so I can actually remove it from here and I'm going to paste it in a different section of the code. Then within this nav item, I'm going to apply styling for the actual SVG, so I'm going to reference that here. And within that SVG, I'm going to set the fill to a particular gray color. I'm going to set the width to 2 REM, and I'm also going to apply the same transition here. So this is already starting to look a bit better. Then I also want to apply hover effects for the actual SVG. So beneath this, I'm going to write and hover, and I'm going to change the color of it. So now if I hover over these SVGs, it changes color slightly. Outside of that SVG, I'm going to reference the link tag. And in this link tag, I'm going to reference the color that I used before. And I'm also going to set the text decoration to none to remove that underline. I want to apply a similar hover effect for the actual text as with the SVG. So I'm essentially going to copy this and hover code, but I'm just going to modify it for color. So now if I hover over it, both the SVG and the label change color. So this is looking really good. We have the entire desktop navigation already built out. So as I increase or decrease the size of the window, the navigation always looks exactly the same, but I'm going to want to modify this for smaller screen sizes. So when the screen size is below a particular value, I want this navigation bar to change. I want it to go to the bottom of the page and I want the elements to be aligned differently. So now I'm going to make this responsive for mobile. So beneath all of this work, I'm going to add a media query. So I'm going to write at media screen and and I'm just going to set the max width to 550 pixels. So this media query is essentially saying that when the screen is less than 550 pixels, I want to change the CSS in some kind of way. So now I'm going to specify how I want it to behave differently in this mobile view. So first I'm going to reference that nav class again, and then I'm going to reference the nav list. Now again, you don't have to do it this way, you could just reference the class of nav list, but I want to keep the entire file in the same kind of structure, that's why I'm doing it this way. And for this nav list, first I'm going to change the flex direction. So initially I set it to column, so everything was stacked like this, but when it's in the mobile view, I want it to go to a row. So here I'm going to set the flex direction to row. So we can see that it just changed. Next, I'm going to modify the width and the height of the actual bar. So here again, it's running vertically, but I want it to be horizontal for this use case. So I'm going to set the width to 100% of the viewport width, and I'm going to set the height to 5 REM. So now we can see that the bar has actually changed, but I don't want it to be at the top of the page. I actually want it to be at the bottom of the page. So here I'm going to set the bottom to zero, which will then push it down. And then I just have to work on the alignment of the elements. Right now, everything is pushed to the left area of the screen. There still is that gap, but it looks a little misaligned. So there are multiple ways that you can align content with Flexbox. What I find to be the best for this use case is using justify content with space around. So in that way, there's a bit of breathing room between each nav item. So in this way, it spaces out all the nav items. So there's a bit more breathing room between each one. So if I increase or decrease the size, that determines the gap between each element and it's not a fixed value. If you don't like this interaction, there are plenty of other ways that you can modify how it behaves using Flexbox. Here, I'm also going to align the items in the center and then add a padding, top and bottom of zero and left and right of one. So that way there's a little bit more breathing room to the left of home and a little bit more between the right of settings. So now when I increase the size, it goes to the desktop view. 
and when I decrease the size, it goes to the mobile view. So just to review what I did, first I created a nav bar with a class of nav, and then following the BEM block element modifier method, I created a nav list and then all the elements in the navigation bar. So first within that nav, I have that nav list, which is the unordered list class, which each had a class of nav item. Then for each list item, I wanted the entire element to be clickable. So I wrapped it in an A tag and then included an SVG and then a paragraph tag with a class of item label. So that way the first element would be the SVG and the second element would be the label for that SVG. So I got these icons online and then I included my own descriptive name for that SVG. So here the title of it was actually home and I used that. Here the title was something else, but I relabeled it analytics for this program. And then I just duplicated this several times and changed the SVG and the label. Within the CSS, first I declared all of the root variables and then set my basic styling that I usually do. And then beneath that, I referenced that nav item and then I applied all the styling for the list and the actual items. For each item, I applied certain styling and effects for the SVG, including a hover effect, and then I applied similar styling for the actual text label and added a hover effect as well. And then to make it responsive, I included a media query where I referenced the nav list and applied different styling here. So here I changed the flex direction, the position of it, the height and the width. And I also modified how the elements behaved in the navigation bar. So in the mobile view, if I increase or decrease the size, the gap is determined by how much space there actually is. Whereas in the desktop view, everything always stays in the same position, no matter how wide or narrow the screen is. So there you go. That's how I created this responsive navigation bar using Flexbox. Please let me know if you have any questions on the topic and subscribe to stay up to date with my latest content. Thanks for watching.